The Mount Pleasant and Columbia Heights neighborhoods are vibrant communities that have long been home to Latinx immigrants, starting in the 1960s with new immigration policies. Fleeing the Civil War in El Salvador in the 1970s, some Salvadorans who left settled in these D.C. neighborhoods. Today, there are more than 300,000 Salvadorans in the DMV area. Central to these communities are local small businesses like restaurants. Research shows that food provides an accessible way to celebrate ethnicity and group identity, creating a tight-knit relationship between the vendor, culture, and customer, contributing to a larger sense of community. One of the most effective ways to build community relationships are through what scholars call third spaces or community anchor institutions. These community social hubs provide people a place to relax, exchange ideas, and build relationships. Scholarship and placemaking says third spaces like local restaurants root the community and help build a shared sense of identity. Haiti's restaurant, La Molienda, and Gloria's Papusaria have all been present in the community for over a decade. Haiti Vanigas has lived on the same street since 1988. She invites those of all backgrounds to enjoy her restaurant. You have a root, you grow in this community. You know people in this community. And, and I want to give the opportunity to the small communities to, to use my place, like at their own home, do social events, all, all kinds of events they want to do for raising money. Teo at La Molienda often catches soccer games and connects with regulars at his restaurant on 14th Street. We talk uh, about soccer because we change soccer from basically, you know, from uh, Spain, Salvador. Yes, yes, now the United States plays against El Salvador. We had a game here on Monday. So we show him and we talk about that. Gloria from Gloria's Papuceria, who requested not to be filmed, spoke about the love the community has for her food. Lo mejor. Vienen y me dicen que rica la comida aquí, por eso nosotros tenemos muchos clientes porque la comida es buena. In addition to building community with customers, some owners work with other local immigrant-owned businesses in the neighborhood. The Latino Economic Development Center in D.C. is a nonprofit that works to support Latino families and businesses. They said they often see business owners working together, sometimes giving each other advice and feedback. Gloria gets her meat from local vendors off Florida Avenue. Haiti gets goods from El Salvador to use in her restaurant, which she does by working with local grocery stores. Uh, I, I use a lot of the products from El Salvador, but we buy we don't get it straight from El Salvador. We, I know we know the Salvadorian um, product, but uh, we buy it in the stores here. While businesses in these neighborhoods may not work directly together, they are still ingrained in the social fabric of the community. Uh, we, uh, I didn't work with them, you know, but uh, we have a, uh, a lot of friends that had a, their own business, you know, and, uh, and from from El Salvador for all the countries to it, but we, if we can, we help each other, you know, but uh, we don't work together you know, the way you know, but we know everybody mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the community. Though these restaurants have long been places for friends, family, and visitors to gather, restaurant owners said that the COVID-19 pandemic changed their relationship with the community and with getting goods from El Salvador. Years from El Salvador, which very popular here, mm -hmm. like a Regia Suprema and things, and they don't explore things that, and um, people are still asking. We still have in the menu, we're waiting any time, but uh, we still not yet. COVID also forced many of these restaurants to close temporarily or open in unfamiliar or non ideal conditions. Yeah, it was impacted a lot. We we open. We 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 was closing for about a year. Mm -hmm. uh, some part of, of the time, it was only uh, serve food to go, mm -hmm. and we closed for about four months completely. Mm -hmm. And with the food to go, we cannot survive. And, and mm -hmm. 
was no salada business. Gloria had to deal with business as well as her personal health. It affected me a little bit because I was interned in the hospital. I had eight days. We closed three months in the restaurant. Even when these restaurants reopened, they continued to face a slew of struggles due to the post-COVID life. We cannot do happy hours now like we used to because people work from home. They get up and they appear here like at 10 o'clock, <laughs> 10 to 3, something like that. The Latino Economic Development Center, LEDC, explained that many businesses will never recover from the impact COVID had. While it's difficult, owners are working hard to keep both their employees and customers happy. Uh, the reason, the inflation, the products, and then we have to pay more, uh, the employees raise and, and the high prices and gasoline, we have to pay for the driver who delivering our product. A lot of changes and we have to give them more deals to customers if you want to attract them. Prices go up, but we have to put them. Gloria shares a similar experience. Todo está caro. Estamos dando un poquito más cara la comida, aunque en el menú no esté el precio, porque el menú lo hace lo hice hace dos años, hace dos años, pero como tu alito se ha venido lo caro todo de de todo lo que uno compra, digamos compra uno de las cosas que pedimos bien caro. The LEDC says the main challenge of COVID was how it disrupted the business in an instant. Fortunately, they have been supporting Salvadoran-owned businesses throughout. They focus a lot of their work on education about pandemic relief for small businesses. LEDC also became a Paycheck Protection Program provider, which enabled them to help small businesses that were often ignored by larger banks. Gloria explains how her business has bounced back since the pandemic. While many negatives came out of the pandemic, there is a silver lining. As the LEDC explained, the pandemic became an opportunity for restaurants to expand their to-go ordering services. As all of us are, these restaurants are recovering from the impacts of COVID. Desde que yo tengo este negocio, que me pegó esta enfermedad, que uno necesitaba ayuda de la alcaldesa, necesitaba ayuda de cualquiera, ¿ves? no hubo, pero ahí luchando yo. Getting back to business is on the forefront of these business owners' minds. As for the future of their restaurants, well, the business, uh, uh, I think, in this area, you know, it, it's, it's already they're getting better, you know, uh, the area, you know, so hopefully it continue like that. So the business can stay, and maybe my family, somebody will cross it down, and I'm not going to be longer in here, you know. But, uh, maybe they continue with the, with the business. No, you can look at it. I ask, uh, I tell you. That's the hardest question. Mm -hmm. I love to continue with the same kind of business until my last day, but things get very difficult. The too much regulations, mm -hmm. it, a lot of money to run the business. We get less help from the new generation. They don't really want to work in this industry, majority. And that's, I would love to be until my last day, but I don't know if they let me. I hope community and God help me.